solve using factoring. And our first thought here would be to just isolate that variable x. That's our default method. But given that, we're learning about a new method for solving factoring. So let's give that a try. First, let's get the zero on the right. Always our first step. And to do that here, we'll subtract 13 from both sides, and we're left with 3x minus 15 equals zero. Perfect. Zero on the right, so let's move on. Let's factor the left-hand side. And we can see we have a greatest common factor, that is 3. And we see that we can pull a 3 out of both of these terms. So 3 times x minus 5 equals 0. So we're all factored up. And that means we can start looking for solutions. Well, we know that 0 times anything is 0. So our solutions are the x values that would make any of these factors 0. Now, we really only have two factors here. So first factor, what can make 3 equal to 0? Well, nothing. 3 is 3. It's never going to equal 0 no matter what x is. So that factor doesn't lead to any solution. The second factor, what could make x minus 5 equal to 0? Well, if x was plus 5, then the x minus 5 is 0. So there's a solution. x equals plus 5. And so we have only one solution in this case, x equals plus 5. And we can always use our isolating the variable skills to confirm our answer. So let's add 2 to both sides, 3x equals 15. And we'll divide both sides by 3. And we end up with the x isolated on the left, perfect. And on the right, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So our solution is 5. And this agrees perfectly with our factoring method.